everybody and welcome to quick take series where i'm going to walk through a knowledge representation topic in 10 minutes or less or your money back although it's free because it's on youtube all right and with that let's go get started rdf is a framework which is similar to a schema but it is essentially how you can set up a data model within a database we have relational databases that are looking at a table structure, but RDF was one of the first applications of a graph-like structure within a database. Where RDF really shines is its way of inferring information. This is particularly helpful when you're dealing with machine learning applications. So an example of this is if you needed to define if something was human or of an alien race, if you're talking about fictional characters. The Navi of Pandora from the movie Avatar are not human, and yet they are anthropomorphic, where they are walking around and talking and speaking English. So if you had to teach a machine that they are not human, even though they have a lot of the same characteristics as humans, using the RDF way of describing this, i.e. type, is a really strong argument for using RDF in machine learning applications. RDF also really excels at data sharing. A lot of open data sources are created with RDF. So if you want to be able to reuse a lot of different data sets out there, use it in a reliable and interoperable way, RDF is usually the best bet. All right, that's the quick rundown on what is RDF and why it is useful. If you are interested in a little bit more about RDF, stay tuned. I'm gonna jump into a little bit more in a sec. RDF is used in a triple store. Triple stores are different than property graphs. There's a great video on the differences between the two. And essentially what it does is it records human knowledge as an easy to read format for computers easy and efficient because a lot of the joins that you would normally have to do in a regular relational database are pre-created when you are using RDF. And it's made from properties. Properties are one of the biggest perks of using RDF. RDF is interoperable because it is a standard that a lot of other people use as well as other systems use. So RDF stands for Resource Description Framework. So it is a framework, but it is also something called a namespace. So these are slightly different. A namespace is essentially a schema for you to do validations off of and to give guidance and rules on how certain pieces of data should be handled. All right, so RDF is always going to be in a triple structure. So it's going to have a subject, predicate, and object. And don't worry too much about those labels because it just means a thing related to another thing. Those things, by the way, are called classes. Classes are the universal understanding of a concept. So an example would be company. But if you needed an instance of a company, Apple Inc. might be the instance for your data. However, if your data is more granular than that, Apple Inc. might be your class, and then a specific office for Apple Inc. might be your instance. It really depends on your data that related to that is the property. That is what is so special about RDF. And properties come from the namespaces and the schema that you can use in RDF. So RDF is its own namespace. You can also mix and match other namespaces. If you are using SCOS or schema.org, you can use those namespaces as well. So for this example, we are going to be using RDF type. And that usually looks like the namespace name, in this case, RDF, colon, and then the property, in this case, type. Type is a very powerful statement. Properties have inheritance models associated with them. So if you had the type director and you connected James Cameron as a type of director, and that triple would look like this, that means that James Cameron would inherit all of the other connections that are connected to director. You see how those joins would have been a little tricky in this situation, whereas now we've already 
embodied the type director with all of those characteristics so we don't have to keep programming it over and over and over again. So when you're looking at the classes of RDF, they can range from people, subjects, meaning topical things, can be titles of things. There are a lot of different types of classes and there's a few exceptions to this where you can have literals as the third part of your triple and those are usually things like dates. And that's how you would code it as a literal. So far we've been writing these triples out so that regular people can read them. Most of the time, if not always, constructed from URIs or UIDs. Whole video on UIDs here for that individual class. So let's take James Cameron and his relationship to his wife, Susie. That would look like this in regular everyday human language, but that's what it looks like when you actually have the URIs. Also, thus far, we have looked at these in a regular triple structure where it's sort of able to be read as a sentence. Typically, you want to serialize these. So serialization just means that you're going to be exporting it as a JSON, an XML, or a turtle file or something like that so that your machines can use it. All right, so RDF is just one part of the larger semantic whole. So in the next installment in the Quick Takes, we are going to be talking about OWL and how it really expands on the properties and other things that RDF already gives you. So with that, Please make sure that you like, subscribe, share, and ring the bell of this video so that you don't miss any more of these quick takes. And I wanna thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time.